Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Johanna Miller, the Vermont Natural Resources Council, and I'm joined here by my colleague, Lauren Hurl, Vermont Conservation Voters, and our friend and ally of the Vermont Sierra Club, Rob Kidd. Um, welcome to our weekly climate dispatch. It is a gray Friday, um, but we are so glad to be here with you, giving you an update on lots of things happening when it comes to climate. Um, I'm going to give you a quick overview, turn it over for, to Rob to go into sort of some updates on the transportation bill and what's happening in that really important arena, and then close it out with Lauren, as we always do. Um, so quick few things. Um, this week, the full Vermont Climate Council met for its monthly meeting. Um, a substantive part of that meeting was focused on um, hearing from the newly um, contracted public engagement consultant team who provide an overview of their thinking and the work that they're going to be doing to make sure that we hear from Vermonters like you and many other Vermonters who have not historically been part of these conversations. So there's a dynamic team that is working very closely with the Just Transition Subcommittee of the Climate Council and a public engagement process that is getting underway. And my expectation is in the next week or so, you'll see a plan and some more information related to um, strategic moments of opportunity for you to weigh in um, to the Climate Council and inform their work related to drafting a plan that makes progress towards um, you know, reducing the pollution that's exacerbating the climate crisis in the most strategic and equitable way. So that's really important. Climate Council remains underway. Um, there's also a very rigorous conversation in the legislature about how to make the most strategic use of the American Rescue Plan Act dollars that are coming into the state um, and sort of readying the stage for potential sort of infrastructure jobs plan dollars that the Biden administration also wants to explore. So there's federal stimulus dollars coming in, an incredible moment in time to not only help you know, Vermonters sort of, sort of continue to move through this pandemic and, and housing, feeding, and otherwise keeping people whole, but using those revenues very strategically for climate beneficial investments that we know put people to work, enhance public health, create really important equity outcomes. So there's a lot happening. And, and as always, there remains just the policy making too. And in the transportation arena that has been, as we've kept you abreast of, happening in the transportation bill, Rob has been following that very closely. Um, Rob, can you give us an update of what's happening with the T-bill um, and all that important work happening there? Good, thank you very much, Joey, for having me on the show. Um, anyway, yeah, so the transportation bill is moving along rapidly. It's in the final throws in the, um, in the Vermont Senate, but I just wanna step back to make sure everybody realizes the importance of the work that was done leading up to this point. Uh, Representative Kurt McCormick from Burlington, his brainchild was to get out in, in front of this issue very early, to make sure we were prioritizing modernization of our transportation system, that which included vehicle electrification, included transit, included complete streets uh, policies. Um, and fortunately, thanks to his foresight, we are moving a lot forward, uh, forward very rapidly on these programs. Um, also, he was joined by Rep Representative Gabrielle Stebbins, John Bartholomew, uh, and, and Molly Burke, all great leaders on this particular path, and they're all on the House Transportation side. Um, a few months ago, uh, the House passed a transportation bill and it's been reviewed in the Senate. And basically, we're quite ecstatic that a lot of the programs have all remained completely intact. We're getting $3 million for the new P, uh, new plug-in electric vehicle program managed by Drive Electric Vermont. Uh, we're getting uh, $750,000 for the Mileage Smart program, which is managed by Capstone, which is a great program to get new uh, used EVs and hybrids into low and moderate income level uh, homes. And then actually a new no novel program, the Re Replace Your Ride program, which would basically take basically the idea of the cash for clunkers but put people into clean vehicles. Uh, so that's another 1.5 million. Uh, and then 50,000 for electric vehicle, I mean, electric bikes. Um, that's even a new uh, program as well. So there's a lot of new incentives out there. So if you're looking into getting into your own electric vehicle, start shopping because there's gonna be some great incentives now for that uh, to be out there. Uh, but also there's money for transit. Uh, we're glad to see that Fair free transit is going to continue throughout Vermont for at least uh, to July of 22. 
Um, maybe we hope it goes further. Uh, and then we actually hope to see expansion of electric buses further. There's a full study within the bill about uh, looking into electric buses um, and how we're gonna trans transition to that across the fleets. Um, then as well, electric vehicle supply equipment. Um, there's this already a state goal of having an EV, uh, a level three charger within 30 miles of every single Vermonter. Uh, Senator Perchlick added to the T-bill that they're gonna do a study to make sure there's within five miles of every interstate exchange. And then they're gonna continue investing more money into uh, multi-home, uh, multi-family dwellings. Uh, we would have liked to see some business charging and that's one of the goals we're gonna look forward to. Uh, advancing uh, in the future. But there's one important thing that I wanna stress is, is that needs to be included in the bill is the Senate included language that would have oversight from the Joint Transportation Oversight Committee on any particular federal money came that would come into the system. Uh, so basically with the uh, proposed Biden infrastructure bill, there's potentially a lot of money that's gonna come into Vermont and not having the legislature in session it kind of could sidetrack issues. So we're trying to make sure that we're gonna have what, have language uh, that we call on the contingency spending that would basically prioritize our climate initiatives. So incentives uh, towards electric vehicles, pushing towards uh, mass transit, pushing towards rail programs, pushing towards uh, incentives for uh, medium and heavy duty trucks. We need this kind of language to make sure that the agency of transportation just doesn't go on as business as usual, such as paving, because in some people's minds, paving is a job creator. Well, it's not a job creator when we're trying to actually simultaneously um, collect the climate emissions and, and, and change our dynamics on that. So uh, we're quite ecstatic that that's gonna go through uh, and we're gonna be working with the house leaders to make sure that the final package includes this con what we call uh, sideboards on the contingency spending. So that is the shortened version. Uh, I could talk for hours if anybody else wanted me to talk about this, but I can't believe Joey actually got me to speak very quickly. That was great, Rob. And we're so grateful how, how much closely you've been following all the ins and outs of the, the transportation bill, the T-bill. Um, and it's really exciting to see all the, the new programs and beefing up programs that have been proven in recent years to be really successful and essential for our transformation. Um, so, you know, we always like to end these with a call to action. And this week, um, you know, in the past couple of weeks, we've been asking folks to call, email your senators to ensure that climate action was included in the state budget and that we're prioritizing it in our transportation funding and all of that. Um, as the, the budget bill has now moved over to the house and they're gonna go to conference committee and hash out all the differences. Um, now we would love people to reach back out to your representative or representatives, let them know that you wanna ensure that the final budget that's gonna to go to the governor includes a large commitment to climate action. Um, as Joey said, you know, we now have a commitment in the budget of 100 million for, um, you know, set aside for implementing the climate action plan. And there's other money for programs for the upcoming year for weatherization and, and other uh, climate initiatives. Um, but we need to, at a minimum, maintain what the Senate has done. And hopefully that is a, a floor that we're building on um, for our climate commitment. Um, and so we want you know, representatives to know that we want to see that strong commitment um, to climate funding in the budget. So um, make those calls, do those emails that you all do so well. It really does make a difference. And you know, we went to having real momentum for this uh, climate action in the budget, which is exciting to see and something to, to build on further um, as we go. So thank you all. Hope uh, things clear up. It looks like we might have a nice weekend. So hope you all get out in it and enjoy and appreciate all the action that is keeping, um, you know, the opportunity for some exciting work on climate. And we'll be back with you next week. Take care. <laughs>